on turn for why politics in the morning this is monday 22nd of july 2019 and today there's so much that we're going to be discussing later on but right now it's quite so much of a standoff between the referendum that has been really going on in the country about the third way alliance and of course this morning we'll be discussing much later on in details and right now i'm joined by two guests and uh he's one all right on my right side is daniel orongo political analyst I don't know how to introduce you. <laughs> Just a political anal analyst. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here this great. morning. Looking forward to a great discussion. Of a course. great discussion, of course. Yeah. All right, and right next to him is Kayesu Ogunda. Ogunda Bradley Sankara Kayesu is my name. Yes. And I'm a resident panelist for White Five Four, especially in this uh, relationship and uh, and uh, politics things. So you're so much conversant with politics. Mm, Let's yeah, do I'm this. I'm a politician. All right. I'm a I'm, I'm leader of all master students at the University all of Nairobi. Right. That is a political position. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. It has to be. Yes. You also told me, Mr. Anguda, that uh, you also vied for position at the MCA level. Yeah, I, as, as a young person, it's I threw my bid for uh, the position of uh, member of county assembly in the last election. Right. Uh, with, with ODM, but as usual, um, yeah, people don't uh, sometimes, sometimes not politics is a game of give or take. <laughs> and uh, we are not stopping there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was opportunity <coughs> for us in 2022. Definitely. Yeah. And that's the language of politicians. They keep on saying definitely. And every time, as I usually say, every Monday morning, when you see me these papers, it definitely has to be politics. I'm not going to put this down until we are done and trying to demystify the mysteries behind the operations of government and, of course, the referendum that I mentioned to you. I want to chip in direct to my panelist and also to discuss about the issue of uh, government operations. I want to talk about transparency and accountability. It has become so much of an issue right now because we're, we're talking right now about the issue of uh, county allocation revenue. I don't want to think, Mr. Gunda. Yeah, my name is Orogo. <laughs> this is the other side. Orongo. Yeah, yes, so... Um, uh, well, let us, let us begin to denote where the rain started beating Kenyans. Uh, we have a robust constitution and um, we appreciate the fact that Kenya has been appreciated and identified as a progressive democracy. Uh, let's put that to the understanding first of all. Secondly, um, our constitution and uh, chapter 2... Uh, gave us a very robust constitution on what is the composition of a republic. And you see, we are a multi-democracy. Way when we amended Section 2A, we became yes. a multi-democracy in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that is the definition of who we are. But then defined by values. Yes. What is the national values as envisioned in Article 10 yeah, of yes. our constitution? Public participation. Uh, you know, division of revenue, that yes. is allocation of resources to the county, mm -hmm. transparency and accountability, Definitely. you know, uh, uh, engagement, inclusivity. Uh, inclusivity. Yes. So, when this ought to be the picture of what Kenya as a multi democracy should mm -hmm. look hmm. that we are a government for the people, by the people, and, and, and you see, that is what it is. But look, come 2010 constitution that gave birth to a devolved system of government, decentralization of yes. funds. What were the principles of devolution? Mm -hmm. The principle of the devolution, again, envision our national values. The resources has to be equitably distributed to the 47 counties, mm -hmm. and the 47 county governments that we are having. Now, as we were discussing earlier, do we have a constitution that will live to the spirit and to the latter? Right. That is the question that we are asking. Now look at where we are before I go far. Always a referendum festival in this country. <laughs> it began way in 1990s, it was there in 2000s, 2013. and again 2010, it has again come to haunt us. Yes. The question is, do we have, is our democracy in question? And I hope this is what we're going to discuss as let we me, go by. Uh, let me probably as we proceed. Do you think we're in a constitutional crisis as we stand? The definition of a constitutional crisis is in a small or a mega terms when a republic is at a standstill because we cannot interpret the constitution yes. to the spirit and the latter. Mm -hmm. 
So we are in a constitutional crisis. Yes. L let me let me probably bring you on board mm -hmm. when we're talking about accountability. Do you think counties have really, or rather, yeah, let me mention about the counties. Do you think they're accountable? They have been accountable to the monies they've been given so far. Um, Alex, let me start by saying that I love devolution. Yes, it's the best thing that has ever happened to this country. The only problem is that it's like a situation of having a good script but having the wrong person to read it. All right, yeah. So, the people to whose uh, devolution, uh, the whole constitution, like the 2010 constitution, yes. the people to people who are supposed to implement it, yes. are just not the right people. But it is the best thing. Like, let me tell you. There are things that have, have been happening in my county, mm -hmm. which, which is exactly? Gori County. Right. Yes. It's, it's one of the counties that have been marked to be mad with corruption mm -hmm. and all that. But I see things happening on the ground. One, two. Uh, beside our home, I can see a well being dug, can see some roads being made. All right. So many things are happening. But, uh, okay, that one I, I attribute to 2010 con yes. Constitution. But the constitutions are in the wrong hands. I, the, the best thing we could do maybe get a guy like uh, my guy here yes. get to power as they want <laughs> and then they implement it the way it should be implemented. Now about the allocation of revenues, mm -hmm. should get more money to the county yes. but only after we have the right mm -hmm. people to implement it. Let me ask you, do you think we need more money is given to the counties because we have not yet been accountable for what we have been having? Well, well, well you see um, the division of revenue, bill, and, and, and I think if you look at the, the, uh, the Public Finance Act, one of the things that we actually looking towards to eat, it was at least 15%. Yes. Remember the word is at least 15% <laughs> All right. of the national government mm -hmm. allocation in each and every financial year should be directed to the 47 counties. And so what are we seeing <coughs> right now? That of course the government has come with its you know um, with its terms to allocate resources to the county. The question is that we are not forthcoming with the answers of what has been given to the county. Now, secondly, and I like what uh, my co-panelist says that you see we have a good constitution, we have it, but it's in the hands of the wrong people. The implementers here, the public officers, the state officers who are actually you know, given an opportunity to serve, are not giving the service, are not living by the expectation of the Constitution. So that means that it brings us to a governance crisis. Right. In effect, that when, for example, billions and billions have been given to the counties, but even as we were speaking before, mm -hmm. you are telling me about a certain county where the workers have not gone paid for, for a long time. It is reflexive on so many counties right. where not only workers have not been paid, Doctors have done their, 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 you know, their services in various hospitals, yes, country federal hospitals. Mm -hmm. What is happening is that developments, roads are in, a, are, are, are in a standstill. So the question is, did we, in effect, accountable to what was given to the counties? Look at the report of control of budget. You yeah. can, you, uh -huh. you, 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 that can literally bring you to tears, where yes. we are suffering as a county, different counties, and everything is at a standstill, but some money has deliberately been misappropriated in the counties with zero accountability. And it brings me back to what I told you before. Yes. Our reflection as a county and as a country is to live by the expectation of the values, yes. mm -hmm. the value system that is envisioned in Article 10. All right. yes. That reflects us. That is who we are as a country. But then is it ideal for us? Is it realistic for us as a country? When a foreigner looks to us, and, 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 and honestly, Kyle McCutter, mm -hmm. the new uh, U.S. ambassador, mm -hmm. during the prayer uh, rally, rally yes. you, you saw what he tweeted. Mm -hmm. Few weeks mm -hmm. in assignment in Kenya, you see what mm -hmm. he tweeted. It's actually reflective of hypocritical government who mm -hmm. prays but then do not implement what is expected. You're trying to say we're not functional from our EA to our devolved units, are we? Well, uh, give the devil his due. Yes. There are counties, for example, like Makweni. <laughs> counties, for example, like Machakos. Yes. We are still struggling with, with some economics in this county. All right. In Nairobi County. And you could actually see that while other counties are getting it right. Yes. And actually, I'm loading Migori because Migori is, is also, while we are trying to place Migori as a county that is not performing, but mm -hmm. you could actually see the governor 
is actually forthcoming with development. Right. Politicization of devolution is actually pulling us behind when it comes to implementation and development. So, in other words, we're yes, uh, yes. Alex, uh -huh. we, we have resources. Yes. I, I, I've not forgotten something that happened when France won the World Cup. Mm -hmm. with a, a team of blacks, mm -hmm. so many blacks. Mm -hmm. I think more than three quarters of that team were blacks. Mm -hmm. So people are saying that it is Africa that has won World Cup. Uh, all right. all <laughs> you know how they rebutted? Uh -huh. They said if the same team yes. is given to an African country, the training money will be eaten, <laughs> They will go to the field with uh, with 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 party parties instead of <coughs> shoes. They will like the all the resources that should yeah. help that team win mm -hmm. won't win. Mm -hmm. So we have the resources, but now mm -hmm. corruption, yeah. and corruption, corruption is the cancer. Here. Yes, and that and that leads me to my next question to both of us to uh, to both of you that we have been hearing issues of corruption from time to time, and last week. The governors went to the Supreme Court, the apex court in the country, and they wanted to be allocated more funds in the counties. But Aidan Duala, the majority leader of parliament, was questioning them to first of all be accountable. You seem to be so much into it. What yeah, do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm one person. I think, uh, like my colleague is putting, you know, we, 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 we are accountable to the resources that we are given. We should be. Yes. Um, and I like this debate because then it focuses on the practicalities of values and principles. Accountability is one of them. And you see, uh, the Public Finance Act requires accountability. Mm -hmm. Can you account for the resources that you allocated before you could ask for more? And you see, the other thing, as I was discussing, the supremacy that you're seeing right now <laughs> in the corridors of justice, yes. it has little to do with monies more to do on bragging rights. All right, who has and, the power? Uh, who has the power? Yes. Between the Senate. the Senate and the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And my friend, I could refer you way back to 2013, when then the senator of Mombasa said that we as a Senate, we should be given more resources. Comparatively, we traverse a county compared to our friends in the National Assembly, right. who only goes through a constituency. And some constituencies are even smaller, even with like a ward. You know, there are constituencies right. that are so small like a ward. Mm -hmm. But for us, how do you give equal resources to a senator, at the same time you give them equal resources to the MP? So look at that. The question that is right now in the battle of the corridors of justice is the questions about money bill. In the parliament, for the, for the, the devolution, the finance yes. bill, that is number, number one. Number two is about the summoning power. Yes. Who was the summoning power? And the Fred Matiangi, then the Minister of uh, Interior, said, if I, as a cabinet secretary, is being summoned twice in a month, the Senate on Security yes. Committee summons me to explain. Mm -hmm. The following week, the Parliament Committee yes. on Security summons me. So who, what is, what is the parallel that we are seeing in the parliament mm -hmm. between the Senate and, and the, the National, National Assembly. Assembly. And the third, like I've said, is purely on supremacy. The definition of which is the upper house and which is the lower house. So I think this is what we are seeing. Now on the bill, mm -hmm. between the difference of the billions, I think the difference is just amount of billions, 15, that, uh, 15 billion, mm -hmm. that is now in the corridors of justice. Yes. Now, the Supreme Court is the upper court and I would like to advise the members of the Senate and the governors. Seeking for interpretation begins at the High Court. All right. We are staring at a situation where we could waste a lot of time in the Senate and the bench in the Supreme Court mm -hmm. is going to refer us back for the, the interpretation court. in the High Court. All right. So I think let us avoid this festival. The monies are not yet in the counties. The workers have not been paid. Development projects are installing in the counties, and who suffers most is the Mwananchi. I beg to, to disagree, Kidogo, uh, too, with uh, both Duale and my friend here, about holding governors to be accountable for whatever they have been given before they have been given. Yes. How many institutions do we have in this country that is responsible to check 
on the integrity and uh, accountability of the governance. Mm -hmm. We have ethics and anti-corruption commission, mm -hmm. that is one. Mm -hmm. We have um, the Senate, mm -hmm. which has the responsibility of making sure that there is accountability in the counties like the oversight role. Yes. We again have the, the assemblies at the county level, where MCS sit. All these are there to see that money is well spent. Mm -hmm. What have they done? What have they done? I think they let us give governors the money, mm -hmm. and then these institutions, which also spend a lot of money, take a lot of money from our exchequer, yes. do their work and make mm -hmm. sure that if there's a governor who is corrupt, let him be prosecuted. I forgot <laughs> to say even yes. the, the judiciary. Uh -huh. It's the work of the judiciary. In fact, four institutions, the judiciary, the county assemblies, the national assembly also do oversight, mm -hmm. but not but for the national government. Yes. And now the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Why are we holding up the money instead of giving the governors and let these people do their work? Let, let, let me probably bring you on board on this particular issue. In Baumet County, we had two several issues about uh, the bridge, two bridges that have been constructed. And according to the local residents of the areas, they were saying it's supposed to be like 1.2 million, mm -hmm. of which the government, the county government said that they used 6 million for just a bridge. And they said it was misuse of funds. What has the county assembly of Baumet done about it? What has the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission done about it? What has the Senate done about it? What has the judiciary done about it? So you think there's someone who's sitting on These are well? money-minting institutions that should be accountable. In fact, we should be asking them, not even the County Assembly of Bomet. That is so, what they are, they, so they are paid to do. make the government to sit and allocate, or rather be accountable. Uh, they, they, should, they should question everything. They should question what the Bomet governor is doing. Yes. Even the, if, or, or let me say the ministry of the Bomet governorship that does that. Yes. They should be the people telling us, let us give the governors money uh -huh. and the institution meant to do oversight. Let them do oversight. There are uh, people sleeping on their Daniel, I don't know what you think. Well, well, well uh, let me... Let me also try to bring this into light. You see, when monies and resources are devolved to the country, the counties from the national government, there are procedures that are followed. First is the approval of the finance bill being read yes. and the Appropriation Act being passed mm -hmm. at the county assemblies. That is the far the county legislations are able to do. Now on expenditure, it is the work of two institutions at the county to do. The internal audits that are within the counties and the external auditors. Now that is the office of the Auditor General. Yes. To come and verify with the internal auditors that this is indeed what is misappropriated in the counties or not. That mm -hmm. is the fifth failure. Now. Failure to which what happens the Auditor General blows a whistle that the money has been misappropriated in these counties. Now, who takes charge of that? The investigation arm will come in to investigate. The ethics and corruption will come to investigate. Yes. However, the approvals that goes to the counties follows the process of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And that means that after each and every budget is read, the Appropriation Act needs okay. to be passed. Now, what happens that in, within the county assemblies mm -hmm. has passed their finance bill? Yes. All over the counties, mm -hmm. waiting for the expenditures. Yes. But since the Division of Revenue Allocation Bill mm -hmm. has not been passed mm -hmm. and approved at the National Assembly yes. at the national level, mm -hmm. their passage in the county assembly is null and void. void. That is the statement that we are as a country. And that is why there is no development that will take place in the counties unless the Senate and the National Assembly agree on the division of a revenue allocation bill and pass into an act. So why, why Now, do however, mm -hmm. the governors uh -huh. could not ask for more money because it's a constitutional requirement yes. in the finance bill mm -hmm. and the, uh, the finance act. Mm -hmm. For them to be accountable through their auditing, internal audits, and through the controller of, oh, you know, the, the, the office of the Auditor General, failure to which any any investigation bodies, any statutory bodies would actually hinder the money on the basis mm -hmm. of the misappropriation of the previous finance 
Yes. Yeah. But, you know, corruption still remains a great menace in the country, especially last year when the nation was really, really mild with corruption. When we talk about the NYS scandal, the KPLC, National Series and uh, Produce Board, Kenya Pipeline Company, it still remains a menace. I don't know what you think, Kayasu, about the issue of corruption, because you said for you and for your opinion, they should not be accountable for it. My, my problem that I, I've just said is that I don't know, but I know a lot of money is being allocated to the bodies that are supposed to fight corruption. We are not, the, something is, somebody is sleeping on the job. Okay, PLO, PLO once said that uh, when you are uh, appointed to be the boss at the Anti-Corruption Commission, that office there, mm -hmm. you should be pretending to work, appearing to work, but you don't work. Mm -hmm. Because if you really work, if you really work, you will be really kicked out. You will be kicked out of that office. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that there is even corruption, <laughs> even in the corruption. Office. Yes. Yeah. You had Sonko the other time complaining uh -huh. Uh -huh. that uh, the, the office of the Auditor General. Yes. The office is there. The uh -huh. office is under Ouko. Mm -hmm. It's like we're, we're pushing him to pay something so that they don't share him in the bad light. Mm -hmm. So even the bodies that are charged with fighting corruption yes. in Kenya are more corrupt than the corruption they should, <laughs> they should be pursuing. So that is the problem. Yes. It's like we are corrupt from the apex to the foot. We are corrupt like corruption is hitting us. You see, it's cancer. Cancer spreads when yes. it, it, it gets into maybe the lungs or, mm -hmm. or the breast. Mm -hmm. If it's not well checked in mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. it will it will spread to all organs of the body. Yes. So that's how the corruption has got. I us. want us to go to our next topic, which is uh, the referendum reacts. But before we go there, allow me to ask, Ken Lusaka yesterday mentioned something that was so critical, and he said he's he's actually the the, the majority leader of the Senate, and the Speaker rather, and. He was saying that there's already a discussion between the Senate and the National Assembly. Do you think the governors will withdraw the case? Well, um, I'm one of the person who was actually uh, trying to write to the articles about why it's important to have a political settlement to, to this matter. Because uh, sometimes you realize that the Constitution is so uh, strict on procedures while um, we are hell-bent on trying to sort them out, but then we are not getting a solution. Mm -hmm. So I, I really support the fact that it's important sometimes for us to avoid, you know, uh, being stagnant and always in conflict. Yes. It is important to have a political settlement. Well, that doesn't mean that we compromise on, uh, you know, on, our, on, on, on the integrity in the supreme, uh, you know, what expectation of the of, of the committees and, and, and institution, it's important to have a dialogue. Now, um, let's also remember that the the deputy president of Republic of Kenya actually shares chairs the intergovernmental budget and economic council, yes. and to some extent, he actually appealed um, that it is important to have a dialogue on these cases to avoid further impasse. Yes, and. Uh, it failed, that is why it is, in, it is in the corridors of justice. So I feel while we are taking a lot of time to brush shoulders in the court of justice, it's important, even within um, the, uh, the party level, for Jubilee and, and, and you see a NASA ODM to that effect, mm -hmm. to actually whip their members yes. to have a dialogue mm -hmm. about solving this issue before it escalates further. <coughs> yes. I think it is prudent to have a political dialogue to solve these issues as it is. All right. People might not find a solution in the courts of corridors of justice right. because then they'll just do interpretation. So, all right, people may not find the verdict right on their side as you have put it. You're watching Why in Politics so here at Y254. Of course, you can keep on interacting with us at Y254 on Twitter, of course, and we want to shift gears for now and talk about the referendum. Padwe Alliance, probably just to bring you on board, Padwe Alliance Party, led by Akuru Okot, are seeking for some constitutional amendments, and some of the things they seek to be amended are, well, number one, const the cost of running parliament from 36.8 billion to 5 billion per year. Number two, they want their members of parliament reduced from 416 to 147. They want the, no, the nominated members of parliament and of course even the women representative abolished. And that's so much more that they really want in the constitution. And Daniel, I don't know what you think. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting to hear from Oguna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Still bad. Still bad. Dead on arrival. Why? They are not going to allow it. Mm -hmm. No, anything that 
it, the, the, the one reason why it's not going to be allowed mm -hmm. is that it's going to reduce the number of legislatures. Mm -hmm. MPs are not going to allow it. Like somebody is coming to propose to you mm -hmm. that you support, mm -hmm. that you lose your job. Mm -hmm. They are not going to allow it. And those people think using their stomachs. Mm -hmm. They are also going to reduce uh, the number of uh, women. Yes. In fact, they are going to scrap out women deposition. Yes. Yeah. They are, women are not going to allow it. They are going to make noise. If they have been pushing for the gender bill in the parliament, mm -hmm. with, like with their blood and sweat, mm -hmm. they have been pushing it, and now you are telling them that the 47, the automatic 47 seats that they have in the parliament is going to be removed. They are not going to allow it. Mm -hmm. Third, they are not going to allow it because of, even the, the you know, the, it, it will need to be passed in, even in the, national, the county assemblies. Mm -hmm. And they are going to reduce the number of wards. My ward is already big enough, too big. Mm -hmm. To be with, with over 100,000 mm -hmm. voters. There's a clip I want us to, before probably we discuss to, to run. Uh, it's about political leaders yesterday. They, they differed about the issue of the referendum. And I don't know where we really stand, but we'll be discussing that. Let's first of, first of all have a look at this clip. Divided opinion continues to greet the push for a referendum following the successful collection of over 1 million signatures by the Third Way Alliance. While some leaders support the call to cut the cost of government as proposed in the Puguza Mizigo initiative, others have cautioned against rushing to amend the constitution. And I can say right now, all we are doing is recurrent, recurrent, there's nothing in development. And this is very serious for a country. So this is an area where we need to do something by reducing the number of people who are employed by Wanjiko. Those are members of parliament, their governors, and we can have few regional governments, and also we can reduce, we can remove the women rep and all that, because we need to have, a, and with the technology, you don't need many leaders nowadays. He wants to reduce the size of running government. I want to advise Ekuru Okot to do his mathematics properly. Perhaps because he's a lawyer, he's not very good with numerics. Let me tell him that the cost of running uh, parliament is only 1% of the entire cost of running national government. We don't want that in the whatever proposal to do in any at attack. Governors, we are satisfied with the two terms. We want now to do to do other things. And these are just some of the divided opinions from leaders from, you know, from Kavisha Washira and of course the Honorable Paul Koinange from Kiamba. These are just some of the uh, opinions that they had to air. Mm. I don't know what you think about the referendum issue by Akuru Court. Well, uh, when we passed the constitution, we <coughs> envisaged that uh, it was not perfect and it needed to be amended. I think let's admit. Um, well, so far as I'm concerned, first of all, um, I, I do not really have an opinion when it comes to how the signatures were collected to 1.2 million. Yeah. But since it was verified by IEBC, yes. um, I think that in their wisdom, mm -hmm. uh, they found that the signatures were actually accurate. Yes, That's what I am assuming. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this level, uh, they have done better than NASA before. When you see for them, it's about 1.2. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, was it Cord or NASA who couldn't <laughs> manage to, 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 you know, to reach? Yes. And the signatures were drawn cows and, and you <laughs> see, and gurus and all this. But for, for Ekuru, he's managed to mm -hmm. do 1.2. Congratulations are in order, sir. But right now, um, what is in stake here is the fact that the referendum proposals appear too philosophical to me. Why? Because you do not propose radical measures that I have seen in proposing. You see, when you, for example, want to reduce uh, the salary of the president to 500,000 per month and that of a member of parliament 300,000 per month, not taking into consideration the inflation in two or three years coming, yes. I think is not realistic. Secondly, uh, when you s want to scrap the position of the nominated members of county assembly, you are forgetting that your proposals would have to go to almost yes. 47 counties yes, for, for debate. Mm -hmm. They will not really like that. And mm -hmm. I think that also my colleague has said, the, Senate, uh, the members of county assembly would vote that out to me. 
The secondly, a term, one term president for seven years, mm -hmm. you cannot propose that while we are having a progressive constitution. While a president would endear himself to mm -hmm. the electorates and would want to re-elect him back. In other terms, you're curtailing the freedom of the electorate to have their say on trying to give another term right. to a president who performs. That is also a hitchback that they need to look at. Mm -hmm. And another one is the fact that scrapping out the position of county women representative, it's not a good choice, it's not mm. a good thing, because that is, is what is trying to balance the issue about the gender role in the mm. National Assembly and in the Senate. And so many other proposals, which yes. I think now, you know, uh, anybody who is suspected on a corruption patch to be given a life sentence, I think this is why I'm saying mm -hmm. it's quite radical mm. because the rule of natural justice required a fair trial yes. and a fair hearing. And not anybody who is, you know, accused mm -hmm. of corruption and is even proposing that cases that of involving corruption must have a particular, a particular time, time limit, yes. which again I say it's okay because mm -hmm. then we have been corruption cases that are going over and over for years and for years and years. But I think uh, it is for that I agree with him. But for the proposal that somebody who's uh, you know uh, involved in corruption should mm -hmm. be given a life sentence, I think for that is too uh, radical and too extreme. Uh, Alex, I, I, I respect yes. Dr. Kuru Court because he's, uh, he has a PhD in law, yes, but here I think he missed it. He missed it because um, he avoided the elephant in the room, right. which is corruption. The mizigo that need to be punguzwad mm -hmm. is corruption. It's what is minting out money mm -hmm. out of our exchequer. And, uh -huh. Yeah, probably, so probably. the plebiscite, this plebiscite debate, uh, everything that to do with it, mm -hmm. uh, is, is just as I said, is dead on arrival. I, I think probably just to understand this, um, he is trying to tell us we want to reduce the wage bill. And that's his main aim. That is mm. what he's trying. We need to scrap some of these positions. Probably that's his aim. So, do you think we are ready for a referendum as, as a country? You know what? What? Uh, what? Uh, Honorable Pio and I told him. Yes. Is that he should hand over his proposals to the BBI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to the BBI team. So Building bridges they, initiative. Yeah, so right. that they compare. Mm -hmm. BBI, yeah, so that the they way. compare the way what they can take and what they can throw away. In fact, he told him <laughs> that yes. from your your briefcase political party, <laughs> we don't recognize that. Right. And Dwele already said, I don't mm -hmm. know who is going to support this guy. Mm -hmm. Because Dwele already said that he's going to mobilize all the pastoral communities to, he, to which he called, he said is the patron, to reject that thing in totality because it's nothing about them. Yes. So if the women are rejecting it, the mm -hmm. pastoral community rejecting it, all the, in fact, NASA as a fraternity has rejected it. Mm -hmm. I, was, I also saw the... Uh, is he the governor or uh, senator mm -hmm. of uh, some senator of Rift Valley, mm -hmm. this young man? He also said it's not going to work. So he's going to support this thing. Before we go to the, I know you have something about the Building yeah. Bridges Initiative and the young people. But before we go there, let me ask, are we overrepresented? Oh, definitely we are. Uh, we are overrepresented. And uh, I think this is the, the undoing nature of committee of experts who... Uh, Ekur was one of them. Yeah, he was yeah, even he the was, chairman. He was, he was, he he was, was the chairman uh -huh. of the, yeah. the Law Review Commission. E e exactly. So um, I'm wondering why would we, he have not foreseen um, this kind of challenges mm -hmm. and wait until this time mm -hmm. so that he would actually come up with these proposals. Uh, but be it that to say, um, you know, uh, we are progressive. Like I said, th there's a progressive democracy we have. So w indeed we are overrepresented. Because, listen, we, um, back to member of county assembly, what member of county assembly, he is employing, you know, a personal uh, assistant, office administrators, a sweeper in his office, that yes. in itself. Uh -huh. I come to the member of, um, of parliament, the same, employed in the office, who is paying mm. taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. Senate, who is paying taxpayers' money. Women, yes. taxpayers' money. Doing the same thing, representing the people at different levels. Yes. So I, I, I really understand mm. that he's trying to deal with an issue of representation. Yes. But then his proposals are not right. Mm -hmm. Now, you are asking me about, um, uh, you know, you, you know uh, the, all these initiatives mm -hmm. are actually one and the same thing because they are meant to score mm -hmm. a desire yes. by a few political leaders. Uh -huh. And I like being truthful. Yes. The publication of BBI has never been done to the public, the right. agreement. 
what we are reading is always briefly because of on, time. on the nine point agenda yes so the bbi and i keep on faulting the bbi in its composition dealing matters of inclusivity and representation <laughs> while young people are not represented in those committees i think that is a fallacy in itself mm -hmm. now why, why do you say that because the issue, when you're reading at the nine-point agenda of Bill BBI, and I wish we had time, probably we can yeah. have time again to discuss probably this. Probably some other time, our time is up. The BBI nine-point agenda, yes. if you read to it, is on inclusion. Yeah. That should be reflected in its composition. Mm -hmm. I am seeing an old generation, 100% representative of the BBI. You know so who they claim. Are those? Uh, you, know, you know, no young representation yeah. in the BBI. So I think it's much hypocritical in its composition. The reason Ekuru... I would not advise Ekuru to support <laughs> and give a proposal yes. to BBI uh -huh. is simply because Ekuru mm -hmm. has appeared to be transparent mm -hmm. in the way he does his things. All right. He followed a constitution, uh -huh. collected signatures, yes. and came up with proposals. Mm -hmm. BBI in mm -hmm. itself has not given us the public agreement about building bridges initiative in the handshake. All right. I have followed his composition. <laughs> yes. And I am sure uh -huh. that one thing that this institution is going to do mm -hmm. is to come up with a predetermined position. Yes. And a predetermined proposals, which to me, mm -hmm. is not likely that is representing the Wanjikus. Parting shot. My parting shot is very simple. I think we are in a quagmire as a country. And as young people, one of the things we keep on when we need asking the leaders is what is in stake for us, yes. not what is in stake for them. Many thanks for that. 30, 30 seconds. Um, for, for Dr. Akuru Okot, yes. that name challenges me. Akuru Okot. You cannot, you cannot bring a mess, like over-representation was his mess because he was the one chairing that, All right. and then come back to tell us to fix it, to ask more money for us to fix it. All right. Another thing is that BBI is good. Now we have peaceful country. There are, right. no, there are no street demonstrations. <laughs> Economy is growing. All right. uh, salute BBI. All right. That has been why politics always fire here as we are discussing politics. But for now, we call it a day for youth and politics. And of course, join me next week. I will be discussing these and much more developing stories. Of course, really trying to bring on board young people and trying to discuss some of the things that are really affecting us. But for now, we want to call it a day for why and politics. But Man Crush Monday is coming in just a few with Val. Do stay good. Many thanks for making time.